welcome back to Australia. Here in Queensland, more specifically, the Australia Zoo, which is the home of the crocodile hunter, Steve Irwin, rest in peace. So this guy in the background there is Akko, spelled A-C-C-O, and he is absolutely huge. You've probably already seen some of the facts about him on screen. One ton, you really must pack a punch. So we're here today in the home of Steve Irwin, the legend. He died in September 2006, so time really has flown. But we've been here around about an hour and a half, two hours, something like that, and we're really enjoying it. I didn't do an intro at the start because I was that excited to come in that I forgot about it. So let's keep wandering around because at 12 o'clock, there's a show on and that should be pretty impressive. Crocodile show, feeding and things like that. Right, let's keep moving. To the edge of the water. Or you can make an even bigger mistake, the ultimate mistake, and go down into the water. Into the crocodile's home, his territory. Now Mum is slowly making his way out into the main arena now. He's just about to break through the gate. As he does, notice, he doesn't disturb the surface of the water. He doesn't make any ripples, he doesn't blow any bubbles. This is the yard of the crocodile. So right now, if this is deep, dark, murky water, you'd naturally find a saltwater crocodile living in. I would have absolutely no idea the last croc was making his way in. Now I'm tapping my feet at the bottom of the pond, he's picking up on those vibrations, which is just how he'd locate prey coming down to the edge of the water. He's steadily making his way in now. 
What can make you guys me up? What's that tail from the power come from? I'll tell you what's crushing around the water like this really upsets him. So now that he's all upset, he's all yours, Richie. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy. All right, watch him with his tail. This guy's pretty crazy. He loves to run at your feet. Most of the crocodiles look up at the food. This guy just charges at us. Up, up, up. Nope. Uh, okay. All right, how's that? <laughs> So as soon as I hit the water, Mother can't help him. So if he's going to come over and defend his home with everything he's got. If I seem a little bit nervous at any point, well that's because I am. He can strike out and hit this fence in the blink of an eye. He's got to cut me off right now. Make me very nervous. What are you doing, Mother? Why don't you set him up down here? Crocodile is actually quite intelligent. He's got a frontal lobe in his brain so he can learn and remember things. And just there, he knew where I wanted to bring him out. He's just trying to cut me off. When it comes down to it, we're not really mates. I love London, but he hates me. So here we go, over here. This is exactly how he set himself up out of the wild, just inches below the surface of the water. So again, if this was dirty, murky water, you'd have no idea he's there. Come on now. Yep, got it. You see, he's got an elliptical pupil like a cat. So your domestic cat, that is. He's got that slit for a pupil, which means it opens up well at night. So they've got good vision at night too. He's looking at me. Look at the... There's food in my hand, buddy. Not my head. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> It's going to have five minutes, I think. Smile. <laughs> Smile. As soon as I take the photo, it looks away. Hi. Mm. All he eats is like hay. Hey. He's got. Boy, he's
is quite easily the coolest tree house I've ever been in. Okay, so we're about to leave now. That was a really great day. We've got a vast array of different wildlife here and it was great to come to somewhere that we'd watched on TV quite a lot with the Steve Irwin Crocodile Hunter series. So we're going to head back to the Gold Coast now, about two hours drive and this is the final night before we fly off to Tasmania. So, trying to hit the road. <laughs> <laughs>